Attack on Titan is back with a fresh new season, and Reiner got a new shiny Titan. Oh, never mind. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a quick review of episode 76, and talk about all the important things that anime watchers should be paying attention to. And of course, no spoilers here, this is a spoiler free video. The first episode dropped, and just like my prediction, it broke the internet. And I am speaking literally, because on the day the episode went on air, Crunchyroll servers went down under the pressure of the upcoming rumbling. And that is pretty impressive, I have to say, although I hope the servers can hold it now. Episode 76, named Judgment, covering parts of three chapters of the manga, picks off with Hanji and nearly dead Levi, surrounded by Flock and the other Jaegerists. We get the first look of Levi, who is seriously messed up from the cart explosion, currently missing his trigger fingers with brutal cuts all over his face and body. Fortunately for everyone, just before Flock is about to perform a double kill on humanity's strongest soldier, he is interrupted by the biggest nude scene of Attack on Titan. Hello, monkey butt! Seriously, I was joking about how they are going to censor this harshly, so I was surprised they made it so revealing. The looks on everyone's faces were priceless, and generally, it was a beautiful scene. While everyone is fascinated by naked Zeke, Hanji manages to grab Levi and escape downriver. Then, we are introduced to a new mysterious character, a young child which Zeke remembers seeing in a strange place. Just to remind you, another person that found herself at the same place was Ymir, just after she ate Marcel and woke up as a person again. We see the young girl building Zeke's body from sand, and Zeke explains that time felt different there. Those are the paths, the invisible connection connecting all Eldians to the founding titan, and Zeke just experienced it for himself. Just to refresh your memories, in a previous episode we finally found out about the previous beast titan and Zeke's mentor, Tom Xavier. We also learned about Zeke's true intentions to make sure Eldians cannot have any babies. He believes that will end their suffering as a race and also redeem the world from Titans. For this to happen, they need the founding Titan and a Titan with royal blood to come in contact, a lock and a key. These are the activation conditions right now. With that intentions in mind, Zeke and the rest of the Jaegerists go out to find Eren Jaeger. From there we jump straight to the new OP, The Rumbling by the group Sin. I know some people loved it and some not so much, so let me know your thoughts in the comments because I'm not going to cover it in this specific video. Moving on, we go back to the battlefield on Shiganshina, on the roof just after they surprised attacked Eren in the previous episode. Gabby was under the impression that Peek betrayed them, but now she understands that Peek never trusted Marley. She trusts the people who fight side by side with her. That shows us how complicated this situation really is, and in the end, people will need to choose sides according to what they believe in, and not according to where they came from. While everything is going on, we see our friends down in the jail, just to remind you that Eren himself was the one who sent them there, so that's an important detail. Up on the roof, Pik sacrifices one of her hands to get free from the handcuffs. She did this so she could transform far away from Gabby, and not kill her while transforming. She comes back to pick up Gabby while Porco attacks Eren, and as you can see, Eren doesn't seem to be interested in them at all. As soon as Eren sees the airships, he immediately knows Reiner is behind this attack, as we see him and Commander McGath prepare to attack. Eren refuses to listen to Yelena and goes facing his old friend. To remind you, Yelena is one of the volunteers, her loyalty is with Zeke and the Jaeger brothers, but it seems that she has some information the other volunteers don't, and we will see it later with Union Coupon. Eren thinks that Reiner's and Marley's actions are not that smart, because they are trying to attack the island after so little time to prepare, and without even knowing about Zeke's plan and secret royal blood. This time, we see Eren is much more prepared and in control of his titan, and not long until Reiner's titan is completely broken, again. And while Porco joins in the fight, we see the first demonstration of Eren's new power. The Warhammer Titan. Spikes burst from his spine and from the ground. He misses the first time, but soon after, he spikes both titans, making them completely immobilized. This was my most anticipated panel, and I really wanted to see this specific camera angle in the anime. 
Mappa did it differently, but it was amazingly done and I have zero complaints. And we can finally see how powerful this titan power is. On the ground, Theo Maga meets with Gabi and Pic. Here we see how surprised Gabi was to be given affection from him. To remind you, this is the guy that sent her and many other Eldians to battle in the previous season. And this season, we will get to see a very impressive character development from him as well. Another thing to notice is that he is not a commander anymore. He got promoted to general right after the top of Marley were crushed on Liberio. That makes him to be the highest ranking person currently in Marley. Here is also when Gabi informs them on the conditions to activate the power of the founding titan and about Zeke's true origin and royal blood. The two brothers need to come in contact with each other, and that information is crucial for Marley. In the background, we see the soldiers of Paradise being taken off by Marley's soldiers on the rooftops. And here's a pro tip from an actual soldier. You never form two shooting lines one behind the other. You will just end up shooting your friends in the head. So yeah. But anyway. Soldiers are dropping to the ground like flies, and this is becoming an incredibly bloody and hectic fight, much more than I remember it from reading the manga. So that just means Mappa did an incredible job. While Reiner and Porco still struggle to get away, a sudden headshot stops Eren's Titan. We see Peak carrying a designated anti-Titan weapon, the one we saw dropping down from the airship earlier. Megaf shot hits Eren's head, which will not kill him, but will make him lose mobility for a while. To remind you, Marley can't let him touch Zeke, but they also can't kill him yet. They need to eat Eren to finally get the founding titan power. Airships rain down fire on everyone, and there are dead bodies everywhere. Porco and Reiner manage to break free from the spikes, and Megaf takes another shot into Eren's head, preventing him from moving. Reiner then grabs one of the spikes and pins down Eren to one of the near buildings. Meanwhile, down in the jail cell, Union Coupon has a change of heart and comes running to free the scouts. Here we finally see that Yelena has her own agenda and that she didn't share all the information with the other volunteers. They were not aware of the wine with the spinal fluid, and also about Zeke's secret plan. Just if you've been asking yourself, Union Coupon is a good guy, but that doesn't keep Connie from going mental on him. And he has a good reason too. Here is where Connie's character is also going to develop in a certain way. And Connie, which was mainly a comic side character up until now, will get much more attention. His scene crying about being tired of being betrayed by his friends was truly heartbreaking. You can hear it in his voice. So that's an incredible job from his voice actor. And for the first time, people could actually feel Connie's pain. Union Coupon explains to everyone that he was lied to by Elena. He believes that children, all children, are the future, so he will never really support Zeke's plan. He begs the group to believe in him and to let him help them. And of course, Armin, as usual, is the voice of reason in the group. He believes Union Coupon has pure intentions and accepts him into the group. Here we see how much faith Armin has in Eren. He tries to convince the group that Eren will never go with Zeke's plan. In fact, he believes Eren has a secret plan of his own, to release just a few titans from the wall to protect the island and to scare the outside world from attacking in the near future. Armin believes that Eren wants to follow the previous plan of using the rumbling in order to just scare the world. The group doesn't seem too happy, but for now, they decide to go along with that. But the most heartbreaking thing was Mikasa when Armin asked her if she wants to save Eren. In the previous season, Eren told her he hated her and that the only reason she protects him is because she is a slave, acting blindly just because of her Ackerman powers, just to protect the founding titan. We see that this really stuck with Mikasa, as she now convinced that this is true and that her internal conflict is the source of her headaches. Armin's words doesn't seem to convince her too much, and in a heartbreaking moment, we see confused Mikasa looking at her scarf, the scarf that Eren gave her. She wants to save Eren, but she doesn't know anymore what is the source of her emotions. We then jump straight to Shigenshina and to Titan Eren, still spiked on the rooftop. And then his Titan starts screaming frantically, like some big move is about to go down. And that's where the first episode ends. Truly a wonderful adaptation, so bravo Mappa. You did justice to this first episode and I can't wait to see what you got in store for us for the rest of the season. 
Did you like the first episode? Let me know in the comments, and I will be here every week to explain every crucial development as we keep moving forward. Thank you so much for joining me today, my Titan-loving friends, and I will see you all real soon. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity inside and outside the walls.